seen this story about mm. mice in McDonald's. Uh, if you haven't, uh, this is the man they're hunting for. Uh, but let's see the mice, please. If we can, there are the mice. Oh, my goodness me. Uh, several incidents. Uh, this is in the Midlands. Live rodents being thrown into McDonald's restaurants. Uh, that man has been uh, arrested. They're now searching for a 30-year-old Bilal Hussein. Um, footage shared on social media shows these mice uh, in another McDonald's. Two incidents earlier this week so far. And it's all about Isabel? Well, it's all about Palestine. You saw his number plate there almost trying to say Palestine. It's coordinated, very organised, uh, and they seem to think McDonald's has sort of pro-Israel stance in all of this. Well, this is about, because basically in Israel, McDonald's uh, donated meals to soldiers there and security workers. So this is the revenge uh, being reeked uh, with all of this. Um, we're going to go to our reporter, Jack Carson, who's across uh, all of this. Well, this is certainly different, Jack. Yeah, yeah, it certainly is. Of course, yesterday um, the police confirmed that within their investigations, of course, within the first two incidents that happened over at the Star City Leisure Complex just outside the city centre and also in Perry Bar after those mice attacks in those McDonald's restaurants, they had been investigating those. They confirmed yesterday that they had arrested a 32-year-old man, as you mentioned, Eamon, a 30-year-old Bilal Hussein is also someone that the police are uh, suspect of being involved in that, in those attacks. They want to speak to him um, around, of course, what the police are calling a public nuisance offences. They have uh, carried out a number of warrants in, in search for um, their arrest, of course. They were, it was yesterday when they announced they were looking for two people, of course. They have arrested, as I said, that 32 year old man in connection with these events. Small Heath, the McDonald's behind me here, that was the third McDonald's in Birmingham that was attacked by mice um, a couple of days ago on the same day as the same uh, McDonald's in, in Perry Bar. So these are very locally organised, it seems, here in Birmingham. But, of course, we also had, um, of course, in Keithley, uh, in, uh, in Bradford, of course, the McDonald's there. That was attacked by somebody throwing stick insects at the staff and on the floor in that McDonald's there as well as McDonald's. It's not just those, the big global company that these pro-Palestine protesters are boycotting. It's Starbucks and it's Disney as well. Also in Keithley, um, in in uh, in Bradford, the the uh, Starbucks, sorry, there had its windows smashed with hammers, um, and the police confirmed that they have also arrested a man in his twenties. Um, West Yorkshire police say in their investigations into that. Well, we're incident, glad those investigations are going ahead. Come. But here's what I don't understand. Where, I mean, besides the cruelty to animals, because they're, they're condemning all these mice to instant death as soon as the pest controllers uh, get in there, where do you get hundreds? Who has hundreds of mice ready on tap to scoop up, attack three and restaurants? with a car registration, all on message. It's all very organised well and planned. coordinated. But, yeah. but I'd like to know, you suddenly say, I need 300 mice when I need them by tomorrow because we're going to paint them in the, in the colours of the Palestinian flag. Where the heck do you get 300 mice from? Well, I th on that point, I did have a look yesterday, actually, and I could buy quite a few mice from local pet shops around Birmingham for about £5 each. So they are readily available because, of course, people keep live reptiles like snakes, which often feed on things like live mice. They are available within pet shops around cities, around towns. Of course, the number of the mice being used is the question of, of whether these people are going to multiple pet shops all at once or whether there is a more wholesale, I guess, supplier of these mice in which these people are able to go and find them and that's of course when they're then able to go and then paint as you say spray paint them in boxes uh, put them in boxes and then throw them into the McDonald's. Yeah and of course there's the health and safety risk in all of this you know that is a food, fast food chain at the end of the day and they are rodents so a total nightmare uh, in terms of business for McDonald's. We should say a spokesperson for McDonald's said the firm was dismayed uh, and they described that uh, their portrayal of their position on the Middle East was inaccurate. Mm. Um, thank you for that Jack Carson. Yeah. Uh, we'll be speaking to you a little bit later on. But you know, that will be me finished because I have a phobia with mice. Yeah, you can never go Both there things. again. Well, like, I mean, well, my, imagine hundreds of mice running around your feet. I know, but like mice that. are actually quite sweet. Five are for a mice? No, I'd scream and five, I'd squeal, five. but they are sweet. So would you think you'd pay a five or for... No, I wouldn't. I'd go and get them for free in my house. <laughs> we used to eat mice when I was young. We used to have um, sweetie mice. Oh, right. Yeah. Sweet. Oh, well, what, do you, do you think... Well, <laughs> Not that.
Bulls Irish, the barbarians. <laughs> no, because I knew you nice. had them in your welly boots and that used to terrify yes. you. Yes. Scared you for life. I had them, so that, that was that. Oh, but dear. Is there any end to the crassness, the grossness, the, the stupidness? But it's social media as well that has made this a thing. Yeah, you know, it's all yeah. a stunt, it's all over TikTok. It Cancel shouldn't be on culture. TikTok, it shouldn't be allowed. Yeah. Let us know your views, gbviews at gbnews.com, or you can tweet at gbnews. Mm. Uh, and of course, it is just a form of protest. We've seen lots of different forms of that since the Hamas attack uh, on October the 7th, and the UK has seen this wave of them on both sides uh, of the conflict, some peaceful, some less so. And the head of the Metropolitan Police, Sir Mark Rowley, has claimed that his officers have arrested at least 100 protesters in the last three weeks. Uh, but many are still asking if the police are tough enough after uh, a number of incidences at McDonald's, which you've just seen there. And uh, joining us to debate this, writer and presenter Connor Tomlinson. Good morning, Connor. Morning. Uh, who says police have lost the plot, and former Met Police Superintendent Leroy Logan, who believes the police are doing the best they can. So, Leroy, why, I, why is this the best they can? Just to, what, what the, you think the police are between a rock and a hard place? Yes, it, it's a thankless task. And, um, People know how to get around these issues, whether it's through um, the way in which they conduct themselves and the way in which they know the, the line, how to draw the line. Um, so the fact that um, lawyers are with police officers observing these protesters um, is to ensure that if they breach the law, they are going to have a good, close um, chance or a good chance of getting a prosecution and um, as a result of that they will know the nuances of whether a case is not strong or not so I, I, I think they need advice they need support there's a lot of nuances to this um, knowing what's a prescribed organization Hamas, Hezbollah, how it um, is being supported or inviting people to not to acknowledge these prescribed organizations and are they showing displays or banners or whatever so it, i think it's a good um support because um they want to ensure they get a good conviction at court not surprised though connor that you think the police have lost the plot i mean we've heard time and again of the problems within the met police being institutionally racist homophobic misogynistic and there have been lots of criticism of them going and tearing down posters uh, appealing for information about missing children uh, victims of the uh, hamas hostage taking within gaza and people saying this is this is outrageous well they also went and as nigel farage covered on his show last night arrested a man who complained on Facebook about Palestinian flags being flown in Bethnal Green High Street. Now, even if you object to the way that he phrased it, he is allowed to turn around and say, these protests, which, bear in mind, were not in a response to Israeli aggression, they were started in response to Hamas killing innocent civilians, they are distasteful. And so we have to turn around and say, why are we dealing with this problem? I mean, I've been at the ARC conference this week, and there are lots of very well-intentioned, smart people sitting in a room and saying, imagine all the problems we could solve if we put our minds to it. And one of the reasons we can't solve a lot of those problems is because we're dealing with distractions like this. We should not be dealing with 100,000 terrorist supporters in London streets. And there's two reasons we are. First of all, it's because, frankly, the will of the British people has been denied at every single election. And we have imported people from an incompatible culture over here who have allied with Hamas because they believe that they share some kind of end goal because of religious or, or ethnic tribal loyalties, but also because of a lack of the will by the Met Police to enforce the law cutting in the same direction. And we can see the contrast between how they treated lockdown protesters with very heavy hands with this. And, and Louise Perry, fantastic writer, has compared this to essentially trying to placate a, a abusive partner with the knowledge that if you offend them, they will attack you. The implication here is that the Met Police know this population, this protest movement is a very volatile group and so they would rather oppress the people that are criticizing Hamas terrorists than offend the sensibilities of the terrorist supporters. We should not have to put up with that. What, what would you do with the mice patrol? As in? What would you do with them? Oh, um, lock them up permanently if they're British citizens. Uh, detain them indefinitely. I think we should bring back public flogging, honestly, Gosh. because if, if, they're, if they're trying wow. to make themselves famous on TikTok, then at least you can make an example of them. Leroy? 
<laughs> he's accusing the Met of losing the plot. <laughs> he's <laughs> lost the plot. I mean, it, it, in all honesty, I think you just need to remind yourself that um, there is a legal right to protest peacefully, whether you like the uh, terms um, or, or the way in which they do it, then that's down to uh, interpretation of the law. And as I said, people know how to do these things. They do it in different ways, you know, mice, all sorts of things. And they're very ingenious around these things. And sometimes they know the loopholes of the law and how to operate. So I think like everything, we just need to um, understand that everyone's got a different point of view they have a right to protest yeah and well you see i don't see i don't see that as peaceful protest i think vincent if i was in there i could go into shock because i've got this phobia about about mice but look at those look at those people there think of the workers there look at that the shock that that causes see i think that is a violence and i agree with connor and i think they that shouldn't be laughed at and say oh just a few wee mice blooming hundreds of the things no, no. No, I wasn't laughing about the the mice issue. I was I was laughing about his attitude about bringing back public flogging. Uh, I, I I totally agree that you know that that is um, again extremely um, traumatizing for a lot of people. You know, some people think mice are sweet. Other people find it traumatizing. So yeah, again, this has to be tested in in in, in the case, in the courts, and yeah. the CPS is the best form of judging this. Um, Leroy, do you think that the police have got the balance right um, around these protests that we've seen at the weekend? People calling for jihad um, and, the, you know, the head of the CPS saying, well, some of this is open to interpretation. Uh, it seems pretty clear to me that a lot of that constitutes a hate crime. What do you think? Well, I, we're in the hands of the lawyers here and, and uh, they, they have these lawyers for um, judging when there's counterterrorism action, you know, where they've... Um, C committing a plot or they're organizing or in some in, or some way or fashion so these lawyers are very experienced so it's not like uh, they've been um treating these incidences with some sort of kit and gloves or anything like that they're, they're taking these incidences seriously they're trying to say well listen let's get it right first time so that we don't put people before the courts and, and it gets kicked out and then the met has to apologize and maybe have to compensate they want to get it right first time. Okay. Gentlemen, got to leave it there. Thank you both very much indeed. Thank you.